Paradise Report is recorded in front of a live stadium audience. As such, the use of industrial language is not uncommon. If you're listening in the company of wee innocent ears, turn off now and listen back later. Although, let's face it, half of them could teach us a thing or two about swearing. Hail Hail and welcome to Paradise Report number 32 on Hail Hail Media. This week, just the one match as Celtic took on St Martin in the Scottish Cup quarter final. With the bodies having already knocked the hoops out of one cup competition this season, would they make it a double or would the boys carry on their march to one of their own? I was off to Paisley to find out. Hope you enjoy it. Hail Hail, here we go again. It's uh, another cup, it's another game against St Martin. And we're here in... Uh, St Mirren Park, the new one in Paisley. It's a nice sunny day. And the Celtic team are just warming up in front of me. And the team news is pretty interesting actually. The Celtic line up on Twitter is apparently getting read out as Fraser Forster in goal, a back four of Emilio Azagiri, Kelvin Wilson, Thomas Rogner, and Adam Matthews. A midfield four that includes Ambrose, which means you think maybe three at the back. Uh, alongside him, Wanyama, Forrest and Joe Ledley and up front, Gary Hooper, Anthony Stokes so, we've put our uh, good performers back into the team for last week we missed out on Wednesday night at defeat well, on the bench we've got Lucas Zaluska, Berem Kayal, Miku, Samaras and Chris Commons just a five in the Scottish Cup and hopefully we're going to get a performance at Celtic today because, let's face it, if we don't win this game today the season's pretty much done unless we can pull off the greatest of comebacks on Wednesday night there is always the potential for a, a, a replay back at Celtic Park but do they want an extra game well the better defeat but uh, better to win it today and send us back to Hamden for the, a semi-final <laughs> alright there you go here come the two teams now Celtic in all blacks among the black white stripes White shorts and white soaps. Today's referee is quite small. Can't see who it is. It's a morning scene, I think they're rocky. Ledley's captain for the day. That bodes well. The last couple of games he's been captain. We've played really well and scored lots of goals. He just made a suit, did he? Thanks to our mascots for this afternoon. Please bring your hands together for a team of George. Well, it matters what I'm going to do, John Wells. It just makes a change. Anyway, going to Oyster done. Probably about running over to do the huddle now. So I'm running to kick off. Let's get crying. Oh, it's a frantic start to this game. Uh, as again, he's not exactly do great at the start. A couple of touches. So we're having a couple of chances in the corner. Nothing really came out. We've had a break at a part with a corner herself. And just, uh, Hooper just sent Stokes through there. But the defender did well enough to hold him up. Stokes never really got a shot away. And the follow-up shot was uh, taken by Craig Sampson. So definitely a, a frantic start to this game. Oh, that's the other one. That's one of the Celtic. Good work on the right hand side. Crossed in by Forrest and Joel Edley ducked down and headed from close range into the net. So, less than five minutes gone, I think. One of the Celtic. Celtic 
better to own a bit more assured than they did in the League Cup semi anyway. Plays a lot better. But, uh, final ball's missing at home. Had a few chances with just on the quick of the ball and the ropes properly. As a Gary slowly coming into the game though. It's a man of a free kick though, which is cleared. Put back in again. Once at one point hits half another and Stokes he clashes it clear. And then as a Gary hands him a goal. Didn't know what he did with Stephen Thompson. He got the ball twice towards goal. And um, I believe it's like uh, his well gone Calvish, who scored for about an inch. Absolute abject defending. Just like a Monaco, we've gifted a goal. So we're 15 minutes gone now. And um, everyone's level. Let's just keep playing that game. We've been playing up front. Start getting the ball in properly. I know, it's blocked your confidence, something terrible. As a Gary's all over the place. The rest of the team seems to be following suit. And St. Martin are now uh, on the ascendancy in this game. Fortunately, they haven't hit a target with anything, but if the carries on, we'll be hitting the target just soon. Oh, boy, did we need that! Hey, Anthony Stokes is the one that's knocked down there, net. We short corner for James Forrest, played the one-two with Hooper. Forrest then whipped it in the back post, took the keeper out. And there was a few of Celtic players running on the internet. I think Stokes is the one that's put it in, but uh, two one of Celtic, and we really needed that. That should uh, sort of confidence issue. Stephen Thompson getting booked here for what looked a leg breaking challenge on Kelvin Wilson. Shocker, absolute shocker. The question is, is Wilson get up now? Oh, he's been helped to his feet. He's walking gingerly to the, the touchline. Looks like he may be all right. Yeah, Wilson's got lucky there. Almost as lucky as Thompson is. That's a red card. Red card for that any day of the week. Shocker. So it's probably much the same as it was uh, when we were one up. We had uh, control in the game. Most parts just not getting the final ball in. Stokes had just had a run out there. If he'd cut it back, somebody was uh, having a shot, but never did pop back and run over by a goal kick. So, um, I mean, we should be further forward in this game than we are, to be honest. We're the better team by far. <laughs> Apart from that spell, when you go back to one each, out of nothing. We're controlling. Ah, decent buying for James Forrest, caused all sorts of mayhem here. Defender needed it up high and into the, the stand, so it's another corner to Celtic. Wasn't the way him to attack that, so I'm not sure the defender had to do that, but he didn't know. Stokes to take this one. Wraps it in. It's flicked clear by a St Mirren player. And it won't go out for a throw in because St Mirren have got there first. So they're getting the caught apart as he gets a fills the guy. He's grabbed the ball, but I know the referee eventually gave the free kick to them. 25, never give it to the horn ball. <sighs> Same old officials. Officials are getting worse in this game as it goes on. Gave them a, a free kick for nothing. And gave them a corner when it came off Thompson's seed. <sighs> never gets any easier, does it? Just need to fight against the officials again. That says it all. A guy clips Wanyama and make, makes him lose control of it. Wanyama still manages to win the challenge to get the ball back. The referee gives a free kick for the challenge by Wanyama. Coming up half time and I swear the referee has getting worse. Man, I had it on in the first half. Celtic on the attack again. Forrest has it on the right hand side. He's also got about three men in him. But right, one's backed off. Plays it to uh, Wanyama. To Ambrose. Back to Wanyama. He hits it. Oh, just over the top. They were starting off, I'm asking for it. 
it should be just about us for this half. There was a claim for a penalty when Matthews went down. Giving all the soft ones he's given them. To not give that was a bit of a shocker. I've seen the more obvious penalties given as half time. <laughs> Two man. We should be further in front. We're going to need to beat 12 men, but you know. Alright, two teams are out, Celtic out just slightly ahead of St. Lauren. Looking about to see if there's any changes, there's always any in the Celtic team. St. Lauren are coming out in drabs and drabs. There's always have any changes either, so as you well in the first half. Sadly, as you well with the referee as well. The Celtic now shooting into the, the end of the Celtic fans are in. So hopefully they're rather lacking away support actually. They've not been very vocal. Plenty of people but not much noise. Not with that kick start this half and suck some boys into it. Anyway, Celtic to kick off. And when Celtic's a restart by a climate here as Samson blasts the ball off from Stokes' head. It's spun up in the air, not in the net unfortunately. Uh, Riff says put it out because Stone's got a right whack. So he's uh, just uh, getting a bit of treatment there, make sure he's alright. But uh, <laughs> that could have went anywhere. He'll be fine. But he's getting off now. Despite putting the ball out, for, despite putting the ball out for a throw, the referee has decided to have a drop ball that he never gave. Oh, see how the fans are singing. Celtic on the right hand side yet again. Uh, Hooper managed to play and uh, cut back to Ledley. Ledley's shot was a bit of a scuff and it was straight through the keeper. It's a man breaking up the park as well and uh, it was offside up. What was a threat at 2 1? Still waiting heavy well on some of these chances. The long ball into the box here that Stokes managed to get, uh, get on top of it as the defender was struggling. But he took a shot for the tight angle instead of trying to put it across the face of goal, but Hooper was waiting for the tapping. It was awkward, we'll be getting the benefit of the doubt for that. Well, I've been dangerous with that. Corner came in, I mean, they cleared it properly, it dropped for a Simmerin player. Unfortunately, it got fired over the bar. I don't like it to the deflection, but the referee did. It's not saying much, mind you. It's a Simmerin of an off corner. Go down to the back post, two Celtic players meet it to make sure it goes out. So it's an off corner. This will start it because Matthews won the ball after on Calvary's, he tugged them back to get back in. Then Matthews had to put it out for a corner. And again deep. This time it's long, way long and out for a goal kick. More evidence at the back don't talk to each other. Rogan just took the ball out of Fraser Forster's hands. That caused all sorts of panic. Fortunately, I never fell for any St. Murren players. But it's kind of silly things like that that get you into trouble. As you hear, he just played about it. Stokes, he tried to turn. Van Zant slid in. Three kicks out it, just inside the corner of the box. This is a chance, see what we can do with us. 20 minutes gone in this half, roughly. There's no clock in somewhere in part of the force, and it's like it actually carries out what time it is. Stokes is going to whip it in. Back post, cleared by a St. Lauren player. He goes back all the way to uh, Forrest and plays it back to Wilson. Wilson plays it wide to Matthews. Matthews jinks a bit, takes on a man, takes on a second, takes on a third, hits the byline, plays it across with no one off power on it. 
in the first minute of play and cuts it out and he lashes it forward only as far as Ambrose who does not control it properly and then plays it over for his head out for a throw in oh that was an inch for 3-1 defender slipped and made a mess of it Hooper got in behind he took the shot, I'm not sure if uh, Sam's got a touch on it or no, but he hit a barn, dropped the forest. Didn't he really drop the forest properly, unfortunately, when he lashed it wide. But, uh, that's as close as we've come in this half. Oh, hey, I got away with that now. Thought he was offside. Was he offside? And uh, Thompson was in behind. First, I came running out of goal and tackled him. Good tackle. Washed it out in the stand for a, a throw in afterwards. George Samarash is ready to come on. So the budget up my next break of play. I'm not sure who's going to come on for Stokes, probably. Stokes doesn't seem quite up for it as much as Hooper is. So man's still on the attack, though. There's a Gary Head's clear. Ladder picks it up. And does he keep it in, though? Oh, throw in. Sub being made now because it's a man so No, I'm gonna keep going. Alright, right, substitution is Anthony Stokes for George Savarat. Probably for the best, as the last thing Stokes did was one ahead of but headed it straight to some women player with no power. Knack up. It's not a free kick to some though, because um F. Ambrose quite a decent challenger. Free kick came to nothing. I think some are getting a substitution out in as well. Some are indeed making a sub. Paul McGowan's going off. That might be a good thing. Graham Kerry coming on. That's maybe not so good. One ex Celtic youth for an all. Decent Martin there, back post. Matthews headed clear. Don't know if he had to make it or not. I don't think he knew. This is probably safety first. So the man in the corner goes in, Rogner clears all as far as the number 8, I think. He goes down, looking for a penalty, the referee looked, didn't bother. Celtic now in the break. Forrest out wide right. Great tackle. Couldn't get away from his defender. And to be fair, he should have looked up in the water because he wasn't going to get a pass across either. Well defended. Don't think that was a penalty for some reason. Okay, went down pretty easily, the way that's left been, I was worried. That's his comment, that's his comment. St Marin have just put an odd decent ball in and it was just out of reach for Thompson. We are not in this game at the moment. On the other end, Samarash went on a run, hit the byline, ran over the byline. Isn't so, it great? This forest got a bit of space now. So he's kind of got under control. Jab forward by Wayama eventually straight to Samson. It's now about 10 to 50 minutes left in this game. Plenty of time for some money to eat wise. Another set piece for some in the free kick this time. Another chance for them to eat wise. So Celtic have been all over the place in the last 10 15 minutes and getting worse as the game goes on. Headed up in the air by Celtic. Samaras so doesn't quite want to hear that properly and Samaras have that just to say their box again. Passing it about it wide. Comes in eventually. When you have a head's clear, only as far as an arse at Marin player. So they play outside their box again. When you have a claws them, I think. There's an Ambrose. Some arse, another free kick anyway. Central this time, this is worth hitting. Celtic are here for the team. If Samara can get an equaliser quicker, they'll make a winner. Carry over it. It's on target. Good hands. Still finished it, it's headed over. Oh, that's a crank save by Fraser Foster. At least one Celtic player still awake. 
No, so far, so far, ready. Come on. So, better him, Kayo. What's he going to be? Substitution for Celtic leaving the field number 25, Thomas Rogner. There's Rogner going off. So imagine Ambrose is dropping out of the fence. No, it seems to be when Yammer has dropped out of the centre of the fence. Maybe he's just open to try to play football in the midfield. Because he's given it away a couple of times doing that. No, free kick doesn't run for nothing. Well, so the judge they have been standing too close to the defender, I think. No chance for them to get the ball in. It's locked down in the box. Headed in towards the goal. Oh, they got it up in the air. Headed clear. They're not claiming for home ball for some reason. Nobody stopped. That wasn't given. The shot came in. Boys didn't understand. They're all warning that the ref are on ball, but there's no point moaning about it, just play on. Play the whistle. Finally, some good for Celtic, but I'm Kyle managed to turn the man well. Played a great ball through at Hooper, who was in the corner. That's now a corner to Celtic. Another sub coming on for St. Marin now. Time running out. Don't know who's going to half, mind you. Substitution for St. Marin, leaving the field at number three, Paul Dummett. No, I think I'll find it out. I'm guessing Lewis guy. I don't know them, but I'm guessing. No, Sam Parker. All right. Anyway, it's going to Celtic. Forest to take up. Maybe we could do something with us. Do some one in as well. Clear by St. Martin, no? Ah, no, for a throw in. Maybe do any, I'll just say take it, of course. Where's he going now? Where's that Hooper? Hey, there he is. Wow, Wedley. Back to me, Oil. Got a Hooper now. Miles to go. Sideways to Matthews. Matthew straight ahead of the byline, doesn't get anywhere near the penalty area, let alone the byline, and uh, tackle, throw in at Celtic. Taking the Hooper is in the corner. Still got it, good time wasting us. Still got it, for us now. Nice to take his man on, that's a throw in, well played by Celtic. This is probably one of the best shelves I've done this half. Keep them in the corner. Port doesn't even want to open you up. No? Forrest does with this one. This one again. Perhaps they're on Yama's feet, but he bounces up in the air. He shoves his man, free kick. He said, Man, can come out now. Take it quickly. Launched forward. Where I'm Azagiri. We'll chase it down and watch it go out for a throw in. But that's deep into our half now. Yeah, it's a man got a corner for nothing. Why is the never gave it? A referee did. As you get it caught it before it went out. So it should be a throw in. Three minutes added on. It's a man in corner, which wasn't a corner. Locked in. Guy at the back post, hits the side net, and we're up, goal kick. Ooh, what a dodgy looking face he's here now. Final sub for Celtic now, Chris Commons. Gary Hooper get off, he's a bit knackered or all. This is our time that we had it on. Right, ready to restart with a goal kick. Good battle in here. Kai Clark's guy, Kai Allen Endo, got a free kick. 
All right, we've got a couple of minutes of the injury time, but I think the, the substitution will have added some on. Don't know how that's not a booking, to be fair. Even thought about playing at home, which was daft. Anyway. Matthew Spoys it down the line to Forrest. He beats his man. Beats a second man. Hits the byline. Plays that cross goal where there's nobody deep. Somebody else should be fucking there. Somebody have it in their corner. Sick. Launched forward. Wanyama wins a header. It's only as far as the Samaritan players. They're in their own halfway at the moment. Out wide right now. It's a long one forward. Is. Should be Fraser Foster's. Is Fraser Foster's. Nothing for the referee yet. First one launches forward, the whistle's going to the mouth. And there is the full time whistle, Celtic are in their semi final of the Scottish Cup. Revenge has been had against St Marin. We are going back to Hamden. Then we're going back to Hamden as well for the League Cup, obviously, but the Scottish Cup ends here. Ours continues. And a draw will happen on Monday. Two games tomorrow, and all one today. And we'll see who we get. The Dundee, Dundee United, Hamilton, Falkirk, come on or Hubs. Not great for Celtic, though. But enough when it comes to the cup. It's all about being in the next round of the heart. Or well, it's all about being in the heart for the next round, even. And relax. Here we are. So there you are, that's us for another podcast. Getting this one out quickly this week as it looks like our next two matches will be going ahead without me. The team are flying out to Jerin for the big Champions League last 16 second leg tie with Juventus, but following that it's a trip up to Dingwall to take on Ross County in the league. As it stands, I've no ticket for that unfortunately, so it looks like my next action will come when Celtic host Aberdeen the weekend after. In the meantime, there's plenty more to listen to in Hail Hail Media. I won't run through them all as you should know them already, but be sure to look out for the newest show, Half the World Away. Okay, so it used to be homeboys down under, but it's about to break out in its own, much in the same way the Paradise Support was once a feature for Lost Boys. So best of luck to them. Finally, just a word on the Celtic Wiki 2012 Book Awards. The winner of the poll was announced today, and it's congratulations to The Road to Lisbon that came out ahead of Paul Larkin's By Any Means Necessary and Kevin McCarra's Celtic A Biography in Nine Lives. Somewhere in there was from Seville to Sevilla, which I believe finished about joint 11th, but to be honest, I'm just glad anyone voted for it at all. So if you did, or even if you didn't, but you bought it and enjoyed reading it anyway, thank you to you all. So on that note, it's time to sign off. This has been the Paradise Report. Talk to you all again soon. I can hear the sounds sing their hearts are filled with joy. Change. Now we're gonna keep the faith that we'll do it.